Hello everybody. So today I'm going to be giving you the rundown on my final surgery. So I haven't updated in a while. The last update I believe was after my erectile implant was placed last time. So a quick little recap is I had that placed. It lasted a little while. It didn't break or anything, but as you all know, my urethra was rerouted to just the top of my scrotum. And at that time, it was fine, but I had started to feel a little uncomfortable with without being able to stand to pee. And I really wanted to have that function back. Well, my surgeon said that the only way to get that back would be to have the implant removed and to have, um, to have that lengthened. So he checked it all out and it was able to be done. Uh, they did it and brought it to about an inch from the top with a new graft and it worked out well. So... I was just then having to wait for the erectile implant to be placed again. So the last erectile implant I had uh, was the coloplast pump and a small testicular uh, prosthesis. Well this time around, uh, since I live in Canada and Canada has uh, different options, they have special funding for something called the Zephyr. So for those that don't know the Zephyr, it's um, FTM specific. It's made for trans men. It's meant to, so unlike the coloplast that kind of like, if this is the pubic bone, it kind of goes like, it doesn't really stick on it because it's supposed to go into the corporal body. So they kind of have to tie it, sew it, attach it here as best they can. Um, the Zephyr actually has like a wall that sticks straight to it and then they can attach it there. So it's not going to come detached. It's pretty sturdy. And unlike the coloplast, the coloplast kind of tapers off to a bit of like a, the tip like this. The, it doesn't really have a full shaped head to it. It has a point. And so then the rest of the phallus actually goes over top by about an inch and kind of droops off. While the zephyr has gland shape to it. So it fills out the head fully. So... <clears throat> I was faced with either I could get the coloplast or the zephyr. And I had the coloplast last time I knew it worked. So I was leaning more towards that one. Because the zephyr is still new. My surgeon's only done about 10 of them. Four out of the 10 have failed. Two of them due to mechanical failure. And two of them due to infection. One apparently came infected as the device. And the other one, the person just developed an infection. I asked the odds for the coloplast, and he said that pretty much the same. Uh, the Zephyr, they don't know yet because it's a small company, and so with more times that they implant it, the stats could change. Anyways, I didn't want the, the pokiness, and I had before it protruded a little bit around the pelvic bone area, and that was quite uncomfortable. So I decided to go for the Zephyr to see how it went. So I had surgery yesterday in the afternoon, so if that's day zero, today is day one post-op. And they actually, on the way out, I guess, or in to sleep, they banged my lip a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. It's like swollen there. So that was not exactly the nicest thing to wake up to. And then the second thing that I really noticed when I woke up was... It was a lot of pain. Like I reviewed my video from last time to see how similar things were. And sounds like they were pretty similar. Both of them, a lot of pain right away. Um, it was just this achy kind of bone feeling just deep in there. So with that pain, I can't really use my abdominal muscles because they do place the reservoir in the abdominal area. So I'll kind of show where the pain is. So like right about here. So if my, my belly button's here, the pain's kind of around here, right above the pelvic bone. It's pretty swollen. Um, this can sometimes hurt it, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit above. And I didn't get any direction on propping or whatnot, so I'm just kind of leaving it as is right now. But yeah, so and it's quite swollen too. It's like much more swollen than I thought. 
Um, so then, <clears throat> aside from that pain, I noticed that it was just really difficult to walk around um, because the phallus was swollen, uh, the scrotum was swollen, and last time it was scro um, it was swollen. It was black and blue. This time it wasn't, but it was way more swollen this time. Like I hadn't ever seen it this bad. And I did ask to go up a size in my testicular implant. So I'm now at a medium. So that could be a factor into it. But I also noticed that both the pump piece and the testicular implant piece are actually kind of high up. They're not at the bottom right now. That's mostly swelling. So I'd say they're kind of as high up as they can go. I can barely feel them up there. And my surgeon did say before I went in for the procedure that they would do that and to massage them down as, as the swelling went down and I'm able to tolerate it to start massaging them down every day, a couple times a day for a few minutes. So I will be doing that. There's no way I can do it right now. It's just too much fluid in there, but I will. <clears throat> um, as well, I noticed that the, the glands part of it actually doesn't go all the way to the tip either. It's retracted a bit. And my surgeon did mention that too. So, it seems like this might be a common thing that happens with it, probably due to swelling too. As time goes on, um, it probably will fall forward a little bit more because I have about, and maybe about this much, that it's not filling out yet. And everything in general just looks really retracted. It looks a lot shorter than it was initially, um, but it is really bandaged up. Like there's a big bandage up top and there's a big bandage over the side of the scrotum. Uh, so I have no idea what it looks like underneath, but it does feel similar and different than last time. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how things progress. Like I said, I can't really get up on my own right now. Um, they did the same thing in terms of antibiotics to prevent infection. So dousing the device, having me on antibiotics before, having me do the scrub before. I'm on some antibiotics now again. Um, and... They didn't tell me whether I could take Advil or not, uh, so I'm just taking Tylenol right now. And I'm currently icing too, because that really helps with the pain. And then propping when I'm walking around. So hopefully that helps with the swelling. As far as other instructions, I really wasn't given any. I thought it was kind of odd that my surgeon didn't give me any, and the surgeon's assistant didn't give me any. They didn't even give me a follow-up appointment. Um, my surgeons kind of had this issue before with me for another surgery. So I'm hoping that they get through to me um, after the long weekend because I did call them and they seemed pretty snappy that they didn't know anything and would call me when they knew something. So hopefully nothing happens in that time that I need to know anything and I'll just leave everything as is. Until then, <clears throat> as well, one major thing I noticed this time was my pain control. I, when I woke up from surgery, I was in immense amounts of pain. And because going into surgery, I had told them I didn't want hydromorphone because I didn't want that to be prescribed to me after I'd gotten out of the hospital because it made me really loopy last time. So I thought that was a reasonable request but they had put it down as do not give me at all. Well, the medication that I do know that has worked for me in the past, oxycodone, they've given it, it's like through pill. So they can't give it IV. So when I'm in pain, it takes 45 minutes still to kick in. And it's about moderate pain control. It was more for when I was discharged that I was thinking. Well, <clears throat> they um, tried to give that to me and it was not handling the pain. So I was asking the nurse and she said that they said no to the hydromorphone because I told them no. Anyways, with a little bit of argument back and forth and figuring it out, they gave me breakthrough um, hydromorphone to handle the pain. But then after the night, um, I slept through the night and they didn't give me anything because I was sleeping. So the next day the nurse came on and she didn't want to give me IV anything because I was being discharged which was really difficult because I hadn't gotten any pain control all night. And then now it was just the pills and some Tylenol. So 
at least to say I've been struggling with pain control and pain management since then. I can't sleep through the nights very well. Uh, I have to sleep on my back and I'm not a very good back sleeper. Plus it just, it really aches all the time. And even just getting up and hobbling around really hurts. So at all times the pain's never gone. It's always there. Sometimes it's managed a bit more, but I'd say it's always go to six. Uh, I do have this to help me. I recommend getting one of these if you're having this kind of surgery because uh, you should be drinking lots of water and to get up to go to the washroom all the time especially when you're laying down and you don't have those abdominal muscles it's really hard so rather than um, calling for help all the time having that is much more helpful although I still kind of need to call for help to, <laughs> to use it at this point but hopefully that changes also for this one you definitely need support like it's painful yeah uh, but you can't use your abdominal muscles like I said so doing anything that requires getting up you need that help you can't bend over either so luckily I have my wife over here helping me actually helping me record this now because I can't hold it very long um, but yeah if it weren't for her then I would be really stuck so if you're going through this procedure an implant of any kind definitely have someone there to help you out throughout the day anyways I will update you more as time goes on and hopefully the swelling settles let me know if you have any questions